Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video, and we're finally starting to talk about the fourth set of the One Piece card game. It's out in about a month as of this video dropping, and I'm really excited about it. I've been testing it on my Twitch as well, so make sure to check that out. Uh, we're doing that on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons as well, so it's super fun. That's where we tested this new leader, the Don Quixote Do Flamingo leader, which uh, is one of the most anticipated from at least me for uh, for this set as well. So we're going to be testing out pretty much every leader uh, up into the, the set just because of uh, you know, there's not as many of them, and I think all of them are kind of viable in their own way, which is really neat. So we're talking about the Don Quixote do Flamingo leader, and specifically with it, with the film package, which is kind of the convenience of, uh, we've kind of had film in green and purple, uh, and he's a green and purple leader, and he, there's just like a lot of advantage from having film, and a lot of it doesn't really care about the, the colors of the stuff you play. So that's what we're talking about. We are going to talk about a little bit of the package that he gets in the set too, and kind of why it's not very good, at least it's not... Uh, immediately something that you want to play in this there are some you know exceptions for it but we're just going to talk about it in general so uh first we're going to talk about the leader it itself and it just it's super simple it just says end of your turn you get to set up to two of your dawn cards as active so we've been kind of seeing this with green uh where we have all this uh these abilities to uh get our dawn back so we did see like odin gets that you have to discard a card for it uh it's specifically a wano country we do get two dawn active it's activate main we also have uh, like sanji with it too you have to play like a vanilla for it so uh it's a little bit trickier to get the two dawn active uh, towards the end of the game, but it's something you can do. And it's once per turn on either player's turn, which comes up sometimes. But Dofi just says, no matter what, two dawn active. Uh, it does have to be dawn that's uh, not attached to anything too. So let's say you pay, uh, you know, you put all ten dawn underneath your Dofi leader. You swing with it. You don't get the the two dawn back from it uh, afterwards. It has to be just cards uh, that's you know dawn that you can set to active and not attached to anything. So just a clarification for that. So, uh, but and so why why do we care? about the film package and we kind of touched about it um earlier but it's just good it's just generically good for uh like a lot of uh staple cards for it are fantastic uh that you know in, in general we don't see from the the green dofi list that or stuff that we got from the set but we have two uh two k's and they're both moderately good chopper is just searchable but uh the buena vista is fantastic for also searching cards too so if you need that that's important uh, if you're playing against something that has like a lot of low to the ground stuff for example like trafalgar law this chopper is really good for just like you know you can attack with it and then you can interact with your opponent as well we also have like the nami which is fantastic card draw it's very easy for this card to draw too but it's also being a 5k body that can attack into things now uh, we also have the guild to sarah which draws two and like the dawn minus two is not too impactful for this deck either especially since again well we're going to have two dawn at the end of our turn every turn so that's really helpful for us there and also just the luffy which lets us like play a seven and a four uh very easily it can also be just like nami if you have eight dawn you can play the nami and then draw a card uh and we're we have like a good amount of cards that are kind of in that four cost uh kind of spot that's really really nice for us so that's kind of like the idea for it just as a really good package it's really flexible what it wants to do and it generates card advantage and i think that's like the biggest thing about the the actual like don quixote pirate so a lot of them are just kind of focused on resting cards that are mostly threes or four costs so like early game you can get some interaction but just doesn't really scale late game all that well uh, which is kind of uh, a, a rough issue with it you also don't get a lot of search power you don't get a lot of draw power it's more of you're interacting by destroying cards your opponent's board or making it like expensive to keep them around so uh but it's basically what i've tried i haven't tested out a lot of it but it just didn't really seem worth it to me if you guys are you know finding your away with the the you know in archetype uh don quixote pirate stuff let me know uh, let me know if you have a list that you really are happy about but it just doesn't seem worth it, it just seems kind of clunky and uh you have to kind of overcommit for like the removal which doesn't really make sense but there are a couple cards that are good from the the set that are specifically for uh don quixote so we have the Diamante, which is a five cost. It's a blocker. Uh, and then also for Dawn times one, Dawn, uh, end of turn. If you have two or more active Dawn, you can set this character as active. So you can do it where, uh, you know, use your leader effect to get two back. And then you can use the Dawn times one effect afterwards. You can stack it the way you want it. So you're able to set this as active. So you can swing with it. You're not afraid to swing with it and then get a blocker back too, which is nice. We also have Treble, which is on play KO up to one of your opponent's rest of character with cost of five or less, which is generically pretty good like five or less hits a lot of things uh right now and then also on a opponent's attack for two which again you're going to have that two open pretty easy uh set up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less is rested so it's fine like on curve you can do some really good things it has some good removal for you but again like it's just 
I feel like it's kind of clunky for it. And no, no uh, counter cost for this one. Uh, it's a six cost with six uh, power, which is fine. That's kind of what you want for it. But the tre treble's okay. It is notable. But again, it's it's kind of a little rough for it. Most of the effects uh, for the pirates do have like the, you know, a, an effect you get to pay for the cost at the, at the end. But it's, it's kind of like, there's just ways to play around it. And it just doesn't, like the card draw is being able to pay uh, extra to use the effects. And it's just, I have, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it later. So uh, we also have the sugar, which is a super rare. This card is really obnoxious. Sometimes it's, it's very good. So it's a two cost with zero power, but it says opponent's turn. And once per turn, when your opponent plays a character card, if your leader is a Don Quixote pirates, rest up to one of your opponent's characters, then rest this card. You get to rest literally anything that's on the board at, at any cost. And now if you do, or if you're playing against red and they play Marco and they pop the sugar, you can't rest it. So you can't rest something. So there's something, but it just has like an on play. That's pretty decent of just rest up to one of your opponent's character the cost of four or less so obviously you, you really only want to play it with a don quixote pirates card because the other effect is really great and like there's just better cards uh for the on play unless you're like there's like a reason to play with the don quixote pirates tag but there it is it's it's nice it's not something i think is like you you get a lot a lot of value for but it can be really really disruptive which is really nice for cheap and then we also have the the big old 10 drop uh this is does not care about what leader you're in so on play a total of three of your opponent's characters uh, rest of characters or leaders do not become active during your opponent's next refresh phase so that's really strong uh, especially like if you if you kind of set it up where you're really defensive and then you're going all in you can just drop this 10 drop some decks are really dependent on their leader attacking as well uh particularly like the uh the new queen leader it needs to kind of use its when attacking effect to either heal or draw and being able to prevent that for one turn is also very very good for the deck so um i think he's great um he's a good 10 drop for us uh sometimes he doesn't do anything but worst case like most leaders are attacking there are obviously new ones that don't right now but you do get like a good amount of advantage for it and not too bad of a card just to kind of slam down. So sometimes you can like kind of make some small swings and your opponents like swing with blockers to get out of it. And then you, you use the Dofi and then you can't. And then obviously uh, you can do some really cool stuff where you, you know, if you stack these uh, one after the other, uh, you can get some really good disruption too. So that there we go there. We also have like the secret rare, which is... I think this card's bad. You can let me know if if you think I'm wrong, but it just it's it's re weirdly particular. It does get to play a five cost. It's only a five cost, and it's only a green five cost. So I've, there are some good cards in that slot, but it's it just doesn't really feel like it has a synergy with anything right now. Like we only have one five cost for uh for Don Quixote Pirates, which is the Diamante, which you unless like on turn you have to have nine dawn for it to actually work though I, mean, I guess what the end of turn doesn't really matter. But like the protection for uh you know all of your original costs with five. So this can be any color. Um I I, I understand like why they made it so it's only one co uh, play one cost five green character just for like maybe limiting like you know so there are some other cards and slots but i really was thinking oh man this would really good be good in e show i could use it i could play something like kaku or i could play something like uh, the blue no uh but then that just doesn't kind of work out so um it, it's because it's you know obviously it only plays the green one so i don't know it's, the card is okay it's also a navy tag so it is searchable uh by brand new which is kind of nice for for a card like this but it just doesn't seem like it has like the synergy for it. So if you guys have like a good combo with it, let me know. But it just seems okay, especially for like the secret rare. It just seems kind of okay. Uh, we do have a couple of events too that we want to talk about real quick. So we do have a searcher in the form of an event, but uh, which is okay. Uh, it's just kind of like the uh, the pirate cards. It just looks top five for uh, one with the type, and it has to be a character. Um, and uh, I guess this this one's a specifically type card. So I wonder if this one can add itself. It's also a a counter effect which is really weird um but that's what it is so you can obviously play it on your opponent's turn when they attack um so that works with your leader a little bit but it's it's kind of wonky as a fact i guess you like don't lose dawn for it but it's it's kind of weird uh like you can find like another copy of it it, it seems uh we also have flapping threads so counter if your leader is a don quixote pirates type up to one of your leaders or characters gains plus 2k power during this turn so Becoming a 7k leader is okay. You do have like pitch a card, but you get the dawn for free. So that's kind of nice. Um, so that's a somewhat okay effect, I think. 
We also have spider web, which this one I'm really excited about. Uh, something is plus 4K during the battle, and then uh, then also you get to set one of your characters as active. So you can obviously do like some of like the double uh, double blocking effects, which is great. Um, it's it's also like uh, the triggers up to one of your leader gets the plus 2K power during this turn, which uh, kind of it's it's weird that they don't have like I I would almost say like these would be flipped on their effects, but that's okay so and then also we have the uh the weak do not have the right to choose how they die which is a heck of a name i'm, I'm really curious if that's what's going to be uh, translated to over here but uh this is a main and counter so you can rest up to one of your opponent's characters or our leaders then ko up to one of your opponent's uh, rested characters at costs of six or less and the trigger is to just set five of your dawn as active so really powerful but weird card um being able to uh like this can get like the double disruption if you need to if you time it at the right time um it's again very costly it makes sense in this deck because you can easily kind of have five open for it uh, compared to other decks with with how the the effects work but it's uh it's very interesting there so that's the card for us and uh, last card i'm going to mention this card is technically not in the don quixote deck but it is a purple card and it's an event card that we could take advantage of it's a it's kind of like thunder bagua but like a little bit better so it's a counter your leader one of your character gets plus 6k power during this battle then up uh, add up to one dawn card from your dawn deck and set it as rested so honestly there's like a lot of times where i um don't have a turn to play going first because like you have uh like you don't really have like you don't want to play your nami because uh it will you won't get like the dawn back and so being able to get like a uh like this this ramps you no matter what which is really nice and i could see like some other decks kind of wanting to get that especially in purple just wanting to get that uh, ramp no matter what so it's it's fine for what it is i haven't tested it that much but it did catch my eye and something to kind of talk about so anyways those are all kind of the individual new cards we want to talk about and let's go into the deck list all right, and here's my current build of the deck list that I've been using. So uh, I, I think it's it's been working pretty well. There's a lot of disruption for it. You are a little bit dependent on going second, uh, which is uh, sometimes a hit or miss. Uh, if you go, like, your turn three plays, you really don't have anything, as I kind of mentioned with the uh, kind of uh, thinking about adding the three-cost event card. But uh, this, this deck in general does have a lot going with it. Uh, this one's kind of focusing more on kind of a, a little bit of, like, using some Don Minus effects. Uh, I really did like the idea of, like, it's really easy for us to go down to two life as a four life leader your opponent just has to attack you twice you just take both hits and so like you could do some kind of fun plays where uh like you go into queen and then you like use queen's effect to uh you know go uh draw two trash one from your hand and then at the end of your turn you get your two dawn active and then you just thunder bog while you're you like you get the fence and then you get to get the dawn back and you didn't really lose your curve which is really nice or even if you didn't even use like a dawn minus effect you can go up your curve so if you start off odd you can go up so uh it's, it's weird though because like we want to get to turn seven faster so like if we go if we go for a second we can use some effects to like we can use the thunder bagua to uh ramp back up and then after that uh go from there so that is kind of nice for us too um being able to say okay we're at we're at four dawn and then we leave we let's say we play like a, a nami or we play like an uta for for four uh they attack and then like we the second attack we just thunder bog we go up to seven and then we can luffy and play like another one of these so i think that's that helps the deck out a lot i think there's some strong combos with that and i think thunder bogwa being able to be part of that even though it's like non-searchable is is like a just just some ramp for free is is very strong so you do have to meet the conditions but they're very easy to meet conditions for this deck so we are playing for the don quixote do flamingo i also really like this kaido and maybe more than i should but we don't like once we get to 10 dawn we really like the dawn minus five doesn't really matter for us uh, again just the fact that we always have two dawn every turn is very good so being able just to drop this to pop something with the cost of six or less is very easy for us too and then being able to uh like use the the rush effect so especially like if we play this very early there's a lot of good six costs that we can just pop for free like the the 10k pressure uh, immediately from it and then uh you know your opponent's going to have a hard time removing this in general so we're always going to have like another 10k swing every turn so uh, i think that's great and then you obviously can get our two dawn back and again thunder bagua is great and even if we had like the 10 dawn uh, we could do this you know not use any dawn on anything and then you, we have three dawn and then we get like the plus 6k counter as, as well as the uh 
being able to get like the ramp as well. So all of that seems kind of good. We just kind of want to make sure we are at seven Dawn anyways, because usually if we play Kaido, a good follow-up is just playing another Luffy, which can then play Nami, Uta, or the Bins. So uh, that's kind of the idea. We're playing two copies of Guild because it is good, good draw. It is somewhat easy to remove, so we do have to be careful. But again, like the Dawn minus two effect doesn't matter for us as well. And then we're playing 10 2Ks of four of the Buena Fuista, four of the Chopper, and two of the Shiki as well. So uh, Sugar Eye still like the card at three it feels okay some decks again like there there is like some good interaction with it and if they they play a deck like just who plays like a big card every turn but we can get rid of the previous big card um this is uh this is it's just really obnoxious because it does it is and has to be the first card they play whenever they play the card you have to rest this so you don't get to pick and choose but uh being able to interact with that and start with something and rest it i think it's great so uh that's really it uh this bins could also be the zoro and everything but i think this is a a strong deck uh queen at four obviously feels good and this is just more cycle and draw especially in a deck that has like a lot of uh non-counter cards like we see right here we have what 12 right here and then also i mean these don't count as much uh, but they do matter for us there so uh, also obviously punk i think these are like the stronger one of the cards there's a lot of actually like two cost cards uh, event cards we can play right now but bagua to ramp up and then get a new play next turn is just very strong i, I find so that is the kind of the list we went over and then also uh, real quick i did kind of want to go over a couple of uh, just generically like good film cards uh that to kind of talk about um like the vanillas are fine so again if you like zoro well, there he went goodbye zoro uh, but if you like zoro now uh, you can use it uh and on top of bins as well if you want just more because we don't have like we have 10 targets i guess what 12 targets off of luffy we do have more in the tony tony chopper the shiki and fista but we don't you or fiesta you just normally don't play them there um we have like the ain though ain's okay too just you get to ramp when you play it so uh, that could be kind of handy. It's uh, it's rested, but being able to just get another body out on curve. And also, if we really want to just be like a ramped deck, uh, you know, we can use Ain on on curve, and then we can use the uh, let's say we go second, we can go Ain on turn two, and then ramp it, and then we can Thunder Bagua, and so that means that the next turn we're going to start on eight when your opponent's only at five, which is really great. And then we can play Uta. There's like a lot of like potential ramp possibilities that we can get with this deck which i really really like so uh uta is like an okay boss monster uh for us too like the dawn minus two doesn't really matter and then we can get like a 6k leader and then uh give that boost to everything else like make like if like blanketly doing this is great especially when we already have like a bunch of like blockers already established so that means like we can have like an 8k luffy blocker and like queen's like a 7k blocker and uta itself is like a 6k so that's fine for you um and if you if you i mean like this this donkey or Dido flamingo is is a mean guy but like it's not it's not like an end-all be all so there's just like a lot of stuff i like experimenting with obviously this is like my first foray into opo4 so i don't know exactly what's good or bad quite yet just like you guys so you guys can kind of figure this out with me but i i do think that the the film package is really fun to play there's a lot of interaction with it and there's a lot of cool stuff you get to do with it so highly recommend testing it out i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys like from your deck list and your builds and uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of op4 content in the next couple weeks so that's going to be it for me thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all next time